Hi everybody, Hasan Charik, Regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant. In this series of videos, I will be telling you about some basic elements of Canadian skilled migration, more specifically express entry. And in this video, we are going to talk briefly about ECA, which stands for Educational Credential Assessment. For those of you who are interested in express entry um, or other kinds of Canadian skilled migration and you have non-Canadian education, you are required to obtain um, equivalence of your non-Canadian education and this document is called uh, ECA or Educational Credential Assessment. Um, you have to get um, it done from certain authorized bodies. There is a list of bodies that I'll, I'll mention. And you have to get an ECA for immigration purpose. There are ECAs done for other purposes as well, but you have to get an ECA for immigration purpose. Keep in mind that no matter from where you have your um, previous education done, if it is from outside of Canada, you require it. A lot of people ask that they've studied in, in, in countries like USA or UK or Australia. Um, would they require an ECA? Yes, if you have to apply for express entry and for other uh, skilled migration streams of Canadian uh, immigration, you are required to have an ECA. Um, for express entry and for many other programs, you are required to have an ECA for your highest qualification. So just giving you an example, if you have a four years bachelor's degree and then a master's degree, you can have an ECA done just for your master's and that's good enough for express entry, uh, as well as many other PNP programs which are linked to express entry. But if you are looking for uh, PNP programs, then it is always good to check with that particular PNP program because some programs do require you to have an ECA which lists all your university level qualifications. An ECA is valid for a period of five years. So once you have your ECA done, it is valid for five years. Um, if you update your education in between, you can always have that added into your, um, into your ECA and, and gain points. Now, why is ECA needed? So if you're applying for skilled migration, um, again, more specifically for express entry, you uh, are allocated points for your education and to ascertain what level of education you have compared with the Canadian education system, it is going to be based on your ECA. So you might have uh, a bachelor's and a master's in some country outside of Canada, but if your ECA does not state that, then it will not be considered as a master's. If your ECA states that it is equivalent to a bachelor's or two bachelor's degrees, then the points that you will be allocated under express entry or under the point grade of um, that particular province, it will be based on the equivalence um, or the assessment that is mentioned in your ECA. In terms of who, um, which are the bodies which do these ECAs? So there's about five different bodies. Um, there's, there's a little more than that, but some of the major names are WES, World Education Service, a lot of people think uh, WES is what is required for express entry or skilled migration, but WES is just one of the bodies um, and they issue an ECA. There is the IQAS, um, uh, International Qualification Assessment Service. There is uh, ICAS, uh, there is CES, University of Toronto. Uh, so there are multiple bodies, uh, about five uh, bodies which you do the uh, the generic uh, ECA and then if you have certain uh, licensed or regulated professions such as if you are a medical doctor then you have to get it done um, through a specific body which is uh, the medical board uh, of Canada and for pharmacist there is a specific body as well. Um, so these are the bodies from which you have to have the ECA done. The cost for ECA, now it can vary between body to body, but generally it will cost you between about 200 to 300 Canadian dollars um, to apply for an ECA. 
some of the bodies will charge you just one amount no matter how many uh, degrees or credentials you're having assessed so say you have a bachelor's and then a master's some bodies will only charge you uh, the base amount 200 250 dollars uh, and you can have both your degrees assessed uh, within one credential some of the bodies um, charge you for each credential being assessed so say if it is 200 dollars for one assessment they will charge you 200 for a master's and 200 for a bachelor's. So it depends, as I mentioned earlier, that um, if the stream that you're applying for requires just the highest qualification, you can save money by having only one credential assessed, which is your top credential. The actual process of getting an ECA. So in most cases, what you will do is that you will go on to the website um, of these various ECA um, issuing bodies, be it VES, be it IQS, and you'll have a look at the detailed requirements. Um, these requirements can vary based on the country of education, um, from wherever you had your education. But normally, uh, what you do is that you go online, you build a profile where you provide all your personal details, your name, your date of birth, um, um, generally details on your passport, passport. Uh, and also the details uh, of your education, like the start date, end date, um, the institution like university or college or technical board from where you had that education. Um, and you create a profile and you pay your fees online using a credit or a debit card. Um, once that application is submitted, you have an application reference number. As part of that application, usually you're required to upload scans of your educational documentation as well as your ID documents like your passport. And once you've submitted the application, you have an application reference number. Depending on the country of education, you might be asked to um, have documents submitted from the issuing university. Um, um, it, some, some of the bodies would require these to be dispatched in, um, in, in mail form. Uh, some of uh, the bodies would accept electronic transmission. Uh, so one set of documentation has to be uploaded from your end. And then there is uh, documentation required from the issuing university, college or board. Uh, in some cases, there are certain authorizing bodies as well um, in various countries which regulate the universities in those, those countries, uh, higher education commission in Pakistan being one of the examples. So then you have to have your documents attested by these bodies and sent to them. Again, depending on the body, uh, the timeline varies. Uh, WES is well known uh, to be the quickest in terms of turnaround time. They are a little tough when it comes to the outcome uh, of your assessment, but it can take between generally between a month up to um, three to four months for the final outcome of your ECA. So it is always advisable that if you are starting the process of skill migration, more specifically express entry, you start this process simultaneously with your preparation for IELTS because this, this can take a few months time. One common question that I get to have uh, from a lot of people is that um, if it is a married couple who are applying for uh, express entry or, or some other skill migration stream of Canada, um, are both, um, both applicants, like the main applicant and the spouse required to have their ECA done? So, um, in, in case of express entry, it is only the main applicant which is required to have their ECA done. But if you would want to claim points for education for your spouse, then you must have an ECA for the spouse as well. So it's not mandatory for the spouse or the dependent applicant. It is only mandatory for main applicant. But to increase your points, um, you will um, be required to have an ECA done for your spouse as well.